Hi, so, really decently good news, no, it's actually amazing news, actually, now that I think about it, it's actually amazing news. Uh, woke up this morning, woke up early, too early, um, anyway, so, I went out and I just got up and I went to my computer to take care of my morning stuff, but slightly earlier, anyway, so, yeah, I opened up my Twitter and found out that, you know, Michael Sam had gotten signed to the Montreal Alouettes. And I feel bad if I mispronounce that. I mean, another little jingle. Alouette, j'adore Alouette. I, I, I get that. I don't know what it means, because I don't know French. Anyways, you know, which means that the, cause the, Canadian, the CFL is a, is a big deal. You know, Americans don't think it is because the general bulk of us don't give a crap about Canada. I want to say us, but it's not necessarily us, because that means most of them, I guess is the term I should say. So, they don't think that, it's just like, as I explore the world of football, I, I realize that the CFL is a big deal. Well, yes, up in Canada, if you can... If you can do good in youth football, then move on to high school, and then move on to a college, and then maybe get into the CFL, you still want to go up to the next level of the NFL. Like, the NFL is the big deal, even over in Europe. It is, like, if you can go from the EAF, whatever it is, EAF, the European American Football Federation, EAFAL League, the Euro Bowl, I think is what it's called, if you can go from those teams to the NFL, you've made some things. Like, everybody looks to the NFL. I get it. But when it comes down, in my mind, to professional. Professional is anything that pays you or recom recompenses, compensates you for expenses. So, like, um, Europe. There's a lot of players that go over there and they're like, well, you don't really make that much money. Well, technically you do. I mean, if someone's paying your living expenses for five months and paying for meals and transportation and at least your flight there, and then on top of that gives you a little bit of money, like about $1,000 a month, doesn't sound like much, you know? But to have an extra $1,000 a month on top of your rent here, you know, plus all your bills and your food, that's pretty freaking good. I mean, it's, like I said, it's not celebrity style money, but it's great. Um, it's not the multi, it's not million dollar contracts that you get in the NFL. It's, you know, and certainly the AFL here, Arena, they get paid a fair bit. I don't know how much they get paid. I haven't looked into it. But this morning, Michael Sam broke the bubble. He was a good college player. He came out and tried to go for the NFL. He was a draft pick. Then he got he got drafted and they cut him. And then the Cowboys picked him up and they cut him. They were, they picked him up for the practice squad, but then they cut him. And everybody's been like, "Oh, it's cuz he was gay, yada yada." It's possibly, who knows? Who knows what the NFL's goes on? There's a lot that goes on behind closed doors and Illuminati crap that goes on. We don't know about. But the fact that he's done it in the CFL, one, says way more about the CFL than does the NFL. <laughs> I'm not sure, you know, praise the CFL right now. I'm, you know, I wish I got their broadcasts in some way. Might have to start watching them on the internet. <laughs> but the fact is, it's sort of like, it's like the glass ceiling. You know, there's like, to me, that I saw it as a little bubble that you know, like, gay football players, and I'm just talking about football here, would, like, bounce against. And it's like, oh, we're trying to get to pro, we're trying to get to pro, we're trying to get to pro. I mean, I'm not anywhere close, but I could see myself just jumping up there trying to hit the top. But he, someone popped that bubble, at least in the CFL, and they've set a precedent now that if he's actually, now, this is still a thing, because Michael Sam got drafted, doesn't necessarily mean he, yeah, <laughs> When it comes to this season, and if he is on the field for this t for this upcoming season for the CFL, that makes it official. Because, anyways, so 
which I believe he's going to be. I don't, you know, this is, not only is he a good player, this is great marketing. It's one of those things that I, and I, and I got a scurry in my head about this one. It's great marketing because, and that's what I knew happened when he was going into the draft. Whichever NFL team picks him is going to be the hotbed of controversy in some way. A lot of publicity. He wound up being the Rams. Well, he went to Mizzou, so, you know, let's move on to the St. Louis Rams. Well, they cut him. Why? They could, you know, write, uh, write a draft report and be like, he wasn't actually as good as we thought. And the Cowboys picked him up. From what I understand, the Cowboys will, will take anybody at this point. <laughs> um, <laughs> there's a joke of like, we hear there's tornadoes in Texas. Everyone should head to Cowboy Stadium because there's no chance of a touchdown there. Anyways, so, uh, the fact is it's now possible. Before, we didn't know if it was possible. Flat out, we didn't know. And I guess this whole thing is an open letter. I mean, I, I don't read good, I'm not really good writing letters. But there isn't many of us openly gay football players, whether we're it, current, current, that's the key. There's a lot that have come out after the fact or whatnot. And we were all, you know, because there's, Michael Sam, there's Connor Mertens, which he's in Willamette University, which is a D3 college, and he's a kicker. There's mind-blanking, one take, can't go look him up, phone's charging. Anyways, I see his face, too. He was a linebacker. He was actually kind of cute. Anyways, and then there's, you know, there's me, and it's semi-pro. You know, and I've got a letter into the head football coach at PSU, which... You know, I just want to know, is it a chance? I'm, you know, I had to bring up my age and I know my experience level. From what Kelsey tells me, they're a public university. They have to have open tryouts to their student body. So, if the coach gets back to me and says, yeah, there's open tryouts, you're, you know, I don't discriminate on age. It's all about skill level. I'll get my grades up. <laughs> That's really what's preventing me from going to PSU anyways. Because I don't have the GPA to go there. But I'll do what I can. Because PSU is a D1 college. It's D sub 1, D1 sub... It, it's There's like the big D1, every, like OSU, U of O, and the big colleges that everyone watches for college football. But then there's a sub D1. Anyways, I'm getting rambling. And so that's that's the thing. It's like, it, it's it's possible now. And the CFL has, has proven it. I'm not even sure if the European teams are even like that. I, I don't know. I, I can't, you know, email every team. I don't know if I have the skill level right now. I will be next year. I guarantee you. I found out some guy, there's a, there's a, a guy on my team who's starting this year, and it's his third year. Like... You know, and I was like, wait, wait, if he's starting in his third year ever playing football, next year will be my third year ever playing football. I'll start. Anyways, that's that. That's the update for Friday. Up Links below to various stuff, probably the Outsports article talking about this. I'll catch you guys over the weekend. Got to practice. Not Probably not much happening. Bye.